So this is going to be a demonstration of some of the concepts in our first entry into looking at um, intervals and what I consider other measures of dispersion. Um, when you look at measures of dispersion, basically how spread out the data is, we can start to look at within that spread of data, where does an individual value exist? And as a, as a statistician, the value that I would choose to look at when identifying these um, you know, kind of where I am in reference to a known, star, uh, known value like the mean is I would go in and say, for example, um, if I look at my personal life, um, you know, my daughter, youngest daughter comes home and Marley hands me her test scores and it says, hey, dad, look how I did. I was plus 3.025 standard deviations above the mean. That would be very meaningful to me. In fact, it would be a preferred method to what we're talking about now. But to most folks, um, that actually wouldn't make a lot of sense. Right? The, kind of the spoiler alert is if she were that high up and that far away from the mean in the positive direction, I'd be at static. <laughs> Her mother and I would be at static. All right? But it's not a, a number that a lot of people can make sense of. So in lieu of those kind of values as a, as a measurement and the number of standard deviations above the, the mean that I am, if Marley came home and said, Dad, I scored in the 98th percentile, that seems pretty clear that her mother and I would be absolutely at static. All right? So this is not a preferred method in my mind, but it's a common practice, and it helps us get into the notion of where within some uh, set of data, all right, where do we exist, right? And again, back to the 98th percentile comment, we can all understand that that's within this 1% boundary that we can define. Now, I think it's important, though, at this point in the class to go through and identify how those boundaries are calculated. So in this first example, we're going to look at a couple of different concepts. The first thing we're going to look at is we're going to calculate or find the home for the median. The next one, we're going to go in and we're going to find the boundary on the first quartile. And then we're going to look at the boundary on the third quartile. I'll do a couple of subsequent videos where we go in and we look at um, calculating other um, deciles, quartiles, um, percentile values. Um, but for now, we're going to identify these three things. Um, along with this, eventually we're going to go in and we're going to calculate um, an interquartile range and discuss that briefly. All right. So in terms of the median, the median is the value in the center. In this case, we've got the 13 data points from our textbook, example 2.14. Um, it basically reads, for the following 13 real estate prices, calculate the IQR and determine if any prices are potential outliers. Prices are in dollars. It then reads these off. Originally, those are not in order. If we want to look at any percentile values, we need to first place them in order. In this case, lowest to highest. We will get to the original question eventually, but for now, all I want to do is demonstrate exactly how we would go about calculating these three values. And then we will use these as a way to start to do this interquartile range. And along the way, then we can come up with a, a definition of an outlier, even though I'm not a huge fan, um, it's kind of a common practice. All right. So we want to look at the median. The first thing we can do is say, all right, we're going to find the median is the value in the middle. In this case, we have 13 different data points. If we start counting in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seventh data point is the one in the middle. Our median is 488,800. Another way we can do this is we can use this, this formula. It's a very simple formula. It finds the location of any percentile equals K divided by 100 times N plus 1. K is our percentile value. In this case, K is... Uh, the percentile that lines up to our, our um, median, we're going to look for the 50th percentile. So this formula is great because it allows us to use it for all kinds of different things, our site first quartile, our third quartile measurement. Um, also, by the way, the median lines up and is equal to our second quartile value. So if I ask you to find one of those, you have the median of the second quartile of the same value. But we can use this formula for all of our different... Um, values, we just have to convert them back into its uh, percentile value. In this case, again, the median lines up to the 50th percentile. We have 13 different data points in here. We're going to add in one. This tells us if we run these numbers, we got 0.5 times 14, we come up with seven. This does not mean that our median real estate price is $7. What this tells us is where to find that. One, two, three, four, five, six, again, seventh. This tells us that our median value is $488,800. That is our median value. 
We can use the same formula to find the location of our first quartile value. So now our first quartile value lines up to the 25th percentile. So we've got 25 divided by 100 times 13 plus 1. If we do that math, 0.25 times 14, we come up at 3.5. Now this presents a unique issue for us because when we looked at our data point up here before to find our median, we landed right on the seventh value. Now what we've got to do is we've got to treat this number in kind of a weird way. It's basically we're going to kind of treat it like a discrete value and a continuous value. All right, we're going to count into three distinct locations and then we're going to go half of the distance between that third and that fourth. So if I go into my third data point, one, two, three, I have uh, 230,500. And then we have to go half of that distance between the 230,000 and the 837,000. So if I look at the distance between those two numbers, okay, it's saying we're going to start off here at 230,000. 500, okay? And then we're going to go now, excuse me, got to grab my eraser. We're going to go 0.5 of the distance between the $230,500 and the $387,000. So I'm literally going to go half of that distance. That distance is $156,500. I do the math on that and I add that back to my $230,500 plus half of this distance, I end up with my first quartile value right around 308,000, excuse me, yeah, 308,750. That then tells me where the location is for my first quartile boundary. My third quartile boundary is 75th percentile lines up to that 75 out of 100 times 13 plus 1. Now I've got, again, 14 times 0.75 gets me to 10.5. The same issue here. I've got to split this number up. I'm going to go in and find the 10th data point. So we were at 7, 8, 9, 10. The 10th data point is 639,000. Plus I've got to, in this case, go half of the distance between the 10th and the 11th data point. If I look at the distance between the 10th and the 11th data point, so I'm taking the 659,000 from the 639,000, I've got a distance there of 20,000. That 20,000 then is what I'm multiplying times one half. If I take that a half of 20,000, I've got 10,000. 639,000 plus 10,000 gets me to 649,000. That then is the location of my third quartile boundary. These we will use in future discussions when we look at an interquartile range and a definition to start to identify outliers. It also represents our first kind of look at percentiles, including the median value. We will build on this in the next video where I go in and I will show you different other percentile values leveraging this exact same formula. Um, with just more flexibility for um, it, with the same set of data. So again, this set of data was uh, for the current revision of our textbook, um, the exercise 2.14. We will expand on this in the next two videos and go from there.